before I came on this trip, I thought I knew California water. So it was a, a great re-education to be like, oh my goodness, it's so much more complicated and there's so many more people in it than I ever really thought. This trip has been extremely powerful to me and it really allowing me to sort of connect the dots of a lot of the issues that I'm otherwise just kind of reading about in the abstract. So being able to follow the source of our water down and really appreciate all the work that goes on around it and in the landscape has just been incredible. We've taken a group of 12 students from four UC campuses all across the state. So the model for this course is really based on ideas around immersive learning. And the only way that we believe students are really gonna wrap their heads around this complex issue is by experiencing these different aspects of water firsthand. In order to tell the story of California water, we needed to make sure to cover as much of the state as possible. So we went as far north as Lake Shasta, Shasta Dam, and also down through the San Joaquin Valley into the east side of the Sierra Nevada. We felt it was important to really establish a common foundation of knowledge before hitting the road so that students really had an intellectual foundation to draw from. So for about 15 weeks, we met remotely on Zoom and had directed readings followed by discussions. There are so many different people who work in the water world and I knew that, but just hearing what they worked on was very new for me. It's really given me more of an appreciation for people who manage it. So Bull's Farm was great because they had reserved areas just for wildlife to try to bring back an ecosystem there. They were being very progressive in terms of their ecology, how they're implementing different irrigation systems and solar panels. At least they're taking those steps to be more like conservative and to be more just aware of how everything's so connected. Some of these problems are not technology problems. Some of them are policy problems and people problems. As engineers and scientists, we we need to understand that we don't always have the silver bullet. The technology of these dams hasn't necessarily improved over um, the last decades, um, yet we've um, even more recently been building uh, larger dams. For example, the Orville Dam built in the 1970s is one of the largest dams and as we all know now, it faced a near catastrophe. So it's really important to start thinking more about the innovations that deviate from a dependence on technology, but bring together interdisciplinary areas of focus and perhaps come up with softer solutions. When we crossed the customness, to hear that it's one of the only rivers west of the Sierras that doesn't have a major dam on it, and they're just letting the river do its own thing, and it's just like letting nature do, it, do what nature wants. It was great to see fresh faces and fresh minds get the download on California water. So to see the knowledge base develop through the classroom sessions and interactions with speakers and the whole field portion was awesome. So really the most important dimension of this trip was the human one. Um, and the opportunity to hear and, and learn about the perspectives of the individuals that live and work in these places that we visited. One thing that Californians should know is where their water comes from. You know, what happens when you open your tap because there's such a disconnect. You need to make that connection for us to reach our goals as a state, you know, to make sure everybody has healthy access to water, make sure everybody has access to food. I wish every Californian knew the source of their water and cultivated an appreciation for water because it does have value. And I think a lot of people have lost that because every time they turn the tap on, water flows out. No matter who you are, know where your water's coming from, know how it works, know how everything's interconnected and that it affects something else. I don't just want you to know where it comes from and I don't want you to go as far as the dam that serves you. I want you to go all the way up, past the dam, and see what's up there. Uh, partly because I think it will give most Californians an appreciation for the incredible natural beauty that their water is also creating and serving and partly because headwater management is really important. Californians are really lucky. We have an abundant amount of resources and natural resources to pull from. But in order to have those you know, another 50 years out, we have to do something about the management and allow rivers to connect us. I would want Californians to know that their access to clean water was a choice made by someone a long time ago, that either they wanted cities to grow, booming economics, you know, in parts of California where they wanted farms to be super flourishing 
And so they've been invested in, but there's so many people in California that haven't been invested in. And we need to catch up if we want to actually have a sustainable water system. You can't have holes or like people left out if we want it to be sustainable. For me, one of the hardest things to realize is that there's always going to be someone that's losing out. And California water always is going to involve conflict. Now is the time for cooperation because I've seen firsthand how farmers, water management agencies, environmentalists are all working together to solve water issues. And that also means that there will have to be sacrifices. I mean, it's not going to be a win-win for everyone. We're going to have to compromise, but that doesn't mean there can't be cooperation to get to that compromise. The one thing that's really stood out to me is the need to build more flexibility into the system and understanding that the status quo isn't going to be able to continue, that maybe some of the rights of access that have been previously enjoyed are going to need to be reassessed. One thing I'd like to share with Californians that I've learned on this trip is the power of empathy. I've been very struck by the benefit of seeing the different perspectives of stakeholders and I think it's through that mutual understanding amongst various groups of individuals that will be best equipped to uh, solve some of these very complex environmental solutions. The culminating experience for the Water Academy was whitewater rafting down the South Fork of the American River and I think that trip epitomizes immersive learning. Not only are you getting wet, you're literally floating by California's history. This is where gold was discovered. This is where California became something. You know, as we say, they came for the gold, but they stayed for the water. So ultimately, we had to see that for ourselves and had a lot of fun doing it in the process. And so that was a good example of a regulated river. A lot of the researchers that came out also had specific studies on that river, so it was great just as we floated down that changes in geology were pointed out. It was fun, it was exciting. A lot of the students had never been on a boat before, so it was fun to watch them get splashed by that first rapid, you know, and the guides were great. Sometimes we were spinning through rapids going backwards, but I don't think anybody got tossed. This has definitely changed how I interact with water. It's time for people to realize where their water is coming from and really give it value and really appreciate it because it is an issue. It's not going away. Water is life for everyone. <laughs>